Hello, my name is Jason Ward, and I am from MakingStarWars.net. That's my sketchy friend, Rob. I put him in the other way today. I don't know why. Hey, man. We're in the upside down section of the show. Hey, Chris. Hey, hey guys. Yeah, so we got some we got some pretty good Kenobi stuff going today. Today is a, it's it's not a bad day for Kenobi stuff if you like the Kenobi, oh the Obi Wan Kenobi. So uh, yeah, this is like our first new new pick from today from Total Film, and uh, we see Kenobi and uh, I don't know. Like I, I I was talking earlier at first, I was like it it has. The, the the style has some Bill Organa vibes to it, like the way that the shawl goes with the under stuff like that. And I was like, I was speculating. I'm like, maybe this is from the end, you know, or something like that. But then, uh, Chris, you, you you corrected my ass. You put me in my place. I did. You said, sit did. down. You said, sit down. You're wrong. Sit your ass down, Jason. Sit you, said, your ass down. you said, sit the fuck down, boy. He said, and he I was said, like, sit down, whoa. bitch. It's like, yeah. whoa, man. Is it no, the... No. Uh, Jason, is it the script boy, script girl? The, who's in charge of continuity on set? Right? Your mama. Like, <laughs> yeah, know. You know what I'm talking about, the actual term. But yeah. uh, I, I, I think Chris would do well at that. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so, yeah. so, what, 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 what was it? What was your uh, take on it, Chris? We, uh, we see uh, Kenobi wear this costume on the way on his way way to work when he's uh, when they all in that ship and he's just sitting there like this, like dreading. The day that's uh, about to, to 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 happen to him. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's uh, we're gonna see this costume on fairly fairly early early on in the show. Maybe the first, obviously the first episode. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's my I love I love this look. I, it reminds me of Luke Skywalker um, in uh, the Last Jedi, and I, I dig it. I really dig it. I like the yeah. blue one underneath. If you if you recall, like back in the day, you were DMing me, going, "What what you got, Kenobi? Tell me, yeah. tell me everything." Yeah, and I was at that point, like this was like early in the summer, I want to say, and I'm like, "Dude, I saw one thing of him like in a in a cave, like his hair was kind of wet and slicked back, and he had like a kind of like a poncho thing on." I, I I think it might what I was seeing was actually the top. I didn't see the lower part, but I'm thinking he might have had this right here. You know what I mean? I think it might have been this. So with his wet hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Spread the hitman heart look. You know, we got a, we got a front end for every super chats we send. Jason will spend ten minutes doing karate in his front yard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Don't worry though. Uh, my garage will be clean. I promise. Thank you for thank you for the super yeah, chat. Fuck you, know, man. But uh, <laughs> that's high praise. It is. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> It, it, it definitely, um, yeah, it, def it definitely, uh, I get scoops too. I'm smart. <laughs> smart. I'm smart. No idea the scoop is. I can <laughs> leak. Look at me. <laughs> we just lost Max, but hopefully, hopefully we get Max back. Um, but yeah, but the, the one thing that I would do want to point out is, is, you know, have you guys ever heard that theory that like Jar Jar is a Sith Lord and stuff like that? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh theory. theory. Crazy Charlie here. He's actually the uh, Sith Lord right here. This is Crazy Charlie. Look at him. He's, he's a creepy dude. <laughs> I, I don't trust him. I don't trust anything about him. He's gonna I don't know where it comes from. Spot. Bro, that's yeah. Kidster. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're at Kidster's, the same eyes. Kidster had, 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 had some Baru years, hasn't he? Like <laughs> like that that 10 years has been a Baru 10. <laughs> Because I'm still gonna well. say Bruce smoking hot, and uh, she ain't looking too bad in this in this show either. You know, twelve and, years and, of doing and, space lizard. Oh fuck yeah! Once, bro. once we get to a new hope <laughs> after Kenobi, man, she just stopped moisturizing. Like you know, I can't moisturize. Uh, the moisture farm isn't doing well. She had enough. Yeah, Hitzer could join the cast of that '70s show with the way he's aging. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at him now. Look at him. He's like, he's like, there are Sith Lords afoot. I can feel it. <laughs> oh, it, it would be cool though if he had like a if he if if he had like a um. So what if he has like a TV, you know, like a used TV shop, and he sells TVs and VCRs, and his last name is Kenobi. He's like, come down to Crazy Kenobi's. We got the best deals. 
And Kenobi's like, shit, this really isn't a good idea that there's a shop <laughs> called Crazy Kenobi's. I'm gonna have to deal with this. But um He's just so using him as 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 a shield, right? Like the way <laughs> Yoda used Dago by as a shield. He's just like, well, I'll just sit next to a guy named Kenobi and you know, <laughs> let him take the hit. So so we, we uh so so we uh, I put this image together cool uh, right here of of we have two instances of Kenobi on Dayu from what I believe to be episode two. And uh, we can see that he is wearing the other outfit uh, on on Dayu. So the outfit that your sources said that he's in disguise. <laughs> well, yeah, this is this is Obi Wan disguised right here. <laughs> pretty funny, pretty That's funny, pretty funny stuff, peoples. But um, and a uh, thing going around, I've already had a couple of DMs about it, is asking me, is that Cad Bane? Is that Cad Bane back there? And I'm gonna say <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair oh, enough. Looks like him in that <laughs> angle. He's got the. Cha cha cha. I'm I'm doing my I'm doing my karate. Um, but this uh, is, yeah, this is so. What's in Spider Man's goggles reflecting in the poster? Uh -huh. Kind of shit. You know, it's like. <laughs> even if it were, what it what what was it gonna do? I don't know. You know, like it'll it'll make him look even dumber if he can't tell there's a Jedi named Kenobi sitting right over there. You know that you may or may not have come in contact with by now. So that actually makes it worse. Unless he's a central part to the plot, that doesn't really help. Yeah. So. I, I mean, I'm I'm completely guessing. I, I I don't I don't know. It doesn't. It it looks like definitely has that that silhouette in yeah. terms of not, but it doesn't also have the correct silhouette for Cad Bane. Yeah. I don't think. It, it has that cowboy just look, it's, you know? it's, <laughs> Filoni just like walks up. Hey, what what's going on out here? What do we got going down? I look like a trucker in space. Look at me. I'm like <laughs> aliens. Look at me. I got a hat. Look Anybody got hat. a fentanyl tester? <laughs> what what all oh, Floyd's here? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So, you you uh, wanna be thrown? Who wants to be thrown? I, I'm casting. Who wants to be thrown? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And then we got this bad boy right here. Max has returned. Sorry. It's okay. Uh so yeah, so we got we got um we got this other shot of the Inquisitor. Uh some people acting like it's a brand new, like it's like a new thing. Yeah, it's it's really i mean if you watch the first trailer and weren't knee-jerk reaction if you think this looks better you pretty much got this in the first trailer yeah. um i i, I seriously don't I, i've always said it though i don't think it actually looks looks that bad i, I, I really better. don't I, and i think if you never saw if you never had a frame of reference which was uh star wars rebels um i don't think you would have a problem with it to be honest with you i don't think people are like what's up big ball sack I think you only see that whenever you're because because people really want to get like fucked by Jack Skellington, and when they watch this, I was saying people really wanted to get fucked by the Inquisitor and in Star Wars Rebels, and uh, now now here we are. Uh, Darth Vader doesn't Don't look king like shame me, Jason. Oh, I'm I'm not king shaming. I, I'm I'm saying mm -hmm. you do you, but just keep keep your Jo materials to yourself. <laughs> it's Prince Buttercup doing that Jack Skellington voice. Buddy. Who wouldn't want that? Anybody looking for a Jo, buddy? Sorry, old, old Craigslist times. I'm kidding, um, but uh, yeah. So I mean, I, I I think it looks good though. I I really don't have a problem with it. Um, if anybody else does, they can tell me in the chat, and that's fine. You I are like entitled. It. You are entitled to your opinion. It's just not equal to mine. I say it's probably the just I, the lighting, but it, he's more contoured this time. Oh. I, I would just say that in episode three, they they built that vertical collar for a reason you know to go side ho to kind of match with the big head you know mm -hmm. so it kind of adds a certain silhouette yeah. the real thing that's kind of missing for me is just the makeup job in general but he is supposed to be like all sithy so i mean he's, know, got, he's got his beats by dre on <laughs> yeah, yeah so you know like it's, i guess you know i haven't been i don't know like it's Makeup's a tricky thing. Like it either works or it kind of doesn't. I've never it doesn't kind of go halfway. So yeah. certainly is he could be a half human. You know what I mean? Like he could be half human, half whatever the fuck those things were from Revenge of the Sith. You know? So yeah. But it, it definitely is a completely different makeup job. Red light notwithstanding, it just from a textural standpoint. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. So. 
like, like, like I said before, it reminds me of, uh, I think they're called Cenobites from what sounds like a delicious snack. Mm, what do you eat, Mom? Cenobites. They're great. They're, they're the future they're, of food. They're, they're sustainable. They're, 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 they sound like <laughs> Teddy Grahams from hell. But um, but from Hellraiser. Roman in your yard. From the movie Hellraiser. There, yeah. there's, it, it has, uh, you know, I get like, like a, it feels, I feel like it could be like a character from Hellraiser. You know, yeah. so. And Pinhead that's what I Yeah, like it's really something. hard with individual shots too, you know. Like, yeah. But, yeah, that's a weird shape. But whatever. Yeah, I, I, I personally, uh, you know, I, I like it. Um, like I said before, he's in, he, he's in shots. So if, if it ruins it for you, um, I mean, you know what actually ruins it for me more than anything is it looks like he has the Weezer logo on his head. But I've always felt that way about him. <laughs> it does look like he has that Weezer W, doesn't he? But um, anyways, uh, Ooh, you. <laughs> wait, yeah, that was Buddy Holly meets the Wizard of Oz. You just did. Yeah, oh, that's wee, Star Wars. Yo. That's <laughs> basically just Star like Wars. like Buddy Holly. <laughs> oh, Happy wee, days of Wizard yo. of Oz. Yeah, and yes. Joe Berry <laughs> And kind of uh, that kind of sounds like um, that rap song um, by Houdini. I think it is. Mm-hmm. Or, Gangster's uh, Paradise. No, 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 from the eighties. Oh. Oh, we yo. Whoa. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, oh so okay so so Santa says. Um, which version of Kenobi had Maul in it? KK cut him out, didn't she? So, yeah, there was uh, an article that came out today from De- Deb- Deborah Chow did an interview. Who was that with? I can't remember who that was with now. Um, but Deborah Chow is just like Darth Maul was never in a version of Kenobi that I was a part of. And, and I could take that a step further and say it was never a part of any of it, <laughs> you know, ever. So that right. and that that was um, that was confirmed by by the Chow. She, they they said what's going on. She said it's Chow time. I'm like what? They're like no mall. That's bullshit. And then she started eating Captain Crunch cereal. That's what she does. She towels down. Captain um, Crunch cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Willow. But um, by the way, uh, uh oh, I I forgot. But here we are. Willow, Willow, Willow. Willow is filming again really quickly. Oh. I just want to make sure I get to this for those who do care. <laughs> Willie Willow. Um, yeah, we, we heard that there was some like trouble with like Willow uh, early on and that, it, mm-hmm. you know, there was there was stuff with weather conditions. We heard that an actor left and stuff like that. So they're, they're back filming, building big sets again, filming at a real castle. They built the castle sets and shit like that. So so Willow. um so Will is having a long shoot, but it uh, I I think it's actually a positive thing. I think it says that they were Bryce like, Dallas Howard right. tore tore up a set. What? She's like, like, do it! She just in the name of Billy like, Barty, and she started <laughs> fucking tearing it up. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that story. Was, really happened. That was our Willow. That was our Willow talk for a sec. But um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that's about the blip it'll make on Disney Plus if. Things keep going the way they do, you know. <laughs> like, like we're the only ones that seem to care. <laughs> I want to know this dude's name. I, I really want to know his name. Told you it's Kidster. Kidster. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like my uncle. Yeah. I think is. Yeah. I think his name is uh, the, the uh, Pussy Slayer. That's what they call him. <laughs> That's what they call him in the the old Star Wars universe. If you want an in universe uh, explanation. But um, isn't there another picture? <laughs> Or was that it? I can't it was, uh, those three. Those three. Oh, I made it four. Because <laughs> look at this guy. <laughs> Looks great. So, yeah. And then uh, thanks to everyone today. We're having a, a uh, super chat channel member day. And thanks to everyone who's a channel member. I appreciate it immensely. And I I, I appreciate uh, old, old man Crub. Uh, for the super chat, that, that means a lot. Supporting the uh, channels, I would keep it going. It keeps it worthwhile to uh, do and to go spend money out to get these scoops. They they don't come free to me, unfortunately. I wish they did. I got Morris Day in the time stuck on my head now, thanks to Max. Remember when Morris Fine. Day threw that lady in the trash can? Yeah. Think I want to know you. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. That was great. Right. I oh, mean, it was almost you. as good That's as throwing a lady into Lake Minnetonka. But but I I like that. Well, her stay the time and Ezra Miller should team up. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that would be that Funko Pop you sent me was pretty hilarious. <laughs> the only thing I would have added to the fun that somebody made a Funko Pop of the Flash on like the the gel costume, like the the black and white stripes. Yeah. <laughs> and the only thing I would have added is I would have put one of those like Hawaiian what they call those of a lay. That's the only thing oh, I would have added yeah. to it. That yeah. would have just that would have. Yeah, they, they said it was the it. Ezra Miller 2002 San Diego Comic Con exclusive Funko Pop. <laughs> it's just he's in the jail cell <laughs> with the, the jail uh, pants on and the Flash helmet on, like. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you said think that the the girl that he was talking to. Oh, your 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 mic is uh it's getting a little scratchy. I think you might have a loose connection. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Transmissions <laughs> interruption. You mean only one thing. Uh, <laughs> Flatulence. <laughs> it's like Speak Sonic to Two in here. Speak to me, lady. No, I made her. I made her afraid to talk. I silenced her. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Max. Yo, yo. But um, I think I wanna, uh, Baymax yeah. says he if he lives in a cave, where is his walk-in wardrobe? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, can I you hear me now? Oh yeah, I can hear you now. You sound fantastic. <laughs> It's so. that time of the day. <laughs> the gremlins are out. Yeah, the gremlins are out. Where's Mohawk, the official kitty of making Star Wars.net's making Star Wars show? Yeah, he's laying down. That prima somewhere. donna. He I was actually very loud before I logged on. Yeah. I asked him to be quiet. Everybody's like, where's Mohawk? And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? You haven't earned it yet. <laughs> so uh do you remember what you were gonna say or did we lose what you were gonna say in that kerfuffle who me yeah about uh oh yeah yeah that i just thought that the person that um was dumped in the dumpster and was uh sandra bernhard but it wasn't i forgot his all right was. yeah this is something time is a lot better the uh, the uh, time like <laughs> back then I, I would rather have hung out with the time than prince for sure though <laughs> for sure Morris A Day. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I like the time. Yeah, me too. I like when he does the bird dance. That's the best. The bird. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> time of Bob's straight back. Bay Max. Like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> that's Rex in a bandana. <laughs> Rex in a bandana. I don't need. I don't really have any context for it, but I just like the. That just makes me laugh. Rex in a bandana. But uh. Oh yeah, I wrote a story. Um, last night we did a we did a little little impromptu show, randomly on a Sunday night, and we talked about a new character played by O'Shea Jackson Jr. and um, his name was Roken. And it's a cool name. Uh, yeah, it's a good name, right? I, I like it. I like it. And um, at least that's what they were calling him over the summer um, on set. So I'm pretty sure that is going to be dead on so you could see that story um right here on the on the right but on the left is a little piece that kind of that kind of came out of that article as i was writing it and uh, i was like you know what we should just contextualize a little little bit there's still a lot about in, in um in Dara varma's character that is still slightly from my perspective unconfirmed and then I would like to, to get better, you know? I would like, like to get laid out better. But, um, uh-oh. James. James, thank you for the super chat. James says, <laughs> I want to see Jason's sweet karate moves. I'll even film it when I'm out in California in a few weeks. All right, dude. I'll, I'll crane kick the shit out of your camera for you. Uh, so you yeah, are do it. not taking that job, I guess. Well, I don't know. Maybe he did take the job. James. Maybe that's why he could come out to California. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I will be honest with you guys though I do not wear pants when I do karate I have to do karate bottomless I don't know why it's just how I center my chi and how I get all my all my my, my, my power going you know it's how I go full super saiyan is <laughs> is just saying it's how I go super saiyan no pants on every time no. so uh but thank, thank you James <laughs> um Indira Varma's character contextualized so I put this little picture look at the little picture all right. The Partisans. So 17 years before the Battle of Yavin, it was the Partisans who relocated Galen Ursa and his family off of Coruscant to help a scientist and his family leave the Empire behind. 
in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, we see the first incl inclinations of the anti-imperialist underground railroad that Saw Gerrera started. By saving one science officer and his daughter, the stage was set to save the universe from the Death Star years later. This is indeed much the same spin I am getting from Indira Varmer's character in Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi. I am not sure what her significance is to the Empire or if it actually matters other than what she symbolizes in terms of resistance and rebellion in a time of conformity, but like Finn in The Force Awakens, her moral compass does not allow her to do what the Empire asks of her. Varma, whose name is not Tia in the series to the best of my knowledge, um, it says that everywhere that her name is Tia, it's clearly, it's clearly not a science officer and appears to be an Imperial officer of some repute. I have been told she defects and is being relocated by the partisans to safety when the Empire asked her to do something she would not normally do. Um, in Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, we see the work of the partisans via Camille Nanjiani's character and Roken, who are helping anyone and everyone to defy the Empire. The partisans' efforts were not just about Generoso's family. We're going to see that they were doing the same thing for, for decades. Um, I am, and then I basically wanted to talk about how I'm, I really like how they are really taking um, the partisans from Rogue One, and uh, those are Rogue One's, uh, Saw Gerrera's um, team of miscreants that we see that we see in there but but they're they're showing us them more during the, the uh, good times before they go completely batshit and um because like when you see Sagarera in the opening of rogue one he's, he's got his hair he just got his hair shaved and he's doing this good thing he's saving the uh the little girl then midway through rogue one we learned that he took care of Jen or so until she was about 16 and everybody was starting to go like we could use her as bait you get the the hint that they started to lose their way in terms of uh, they 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 decided that they had to play dirty in order to win. And uh, you could see, I mean, I mean, I, I could understand how they could, how a movement like the partisans could end up there when they're he's been doing it since the Clone Wars, and over all that year, he just sees the worst of of the galaxy, and they're fighting against it. But we do see that if they that they do these good things and. The initial good things he did is uh, what Saw did is what allows them to destroy the Death Star. It's what allows them to take Galen Erso out of the picture, even though they recapture him and he does build it. He does put in uh, the weakness, and and that might not have happened if he had just gone straight into development of the Death Star, and if they didn't have those extra years of development on the Death Star where Galen wasn't hiding stuff like that. And um, so, so you could see how like that little bit of resistance helped destroy the the Death Star. In this instance, um, in Dara Varma's character, she uh, she's inspirational to Kenobi. She's important, and um, I've heard that it that iterations of her character have always been around. Uh, she's been since it was a film and stuff like that. So like so like she's important. There's there, there's there's something more here than than we could actually get into today, but. But she she um, is sort of like, you know, has that Finn thing. And I think she's a product of that underground railroad. And that's that's the important thing that we need to we need to take away from this is what are, what are the parties doing? And, um, you know, you know, and so and how does in dark and how does she become how does Varma's character become wrapped up with Kenobi? Well, I that's that's how. So she's there's being, a chance we might see more of these characters in uh in the future. You were saying in yesterday's uh, stream that Roken, you might we might see more of him. Yeah, I, I don't know for I don't know 100 percent that it that it she survives. I believe that she probably does. Yeah, but I don't know 100 percent on that. But she's definitely she, important. Uh, yeah, she's definitely important to the story. She's not just like a hi, how's it going? Bye. Um, you know, her and Kenobi have like scenes together and stuff, Ooh. and then um. And Roken survives. And, uh, you know, like, like, uh, I, I've heard like, you know, like, like, yeah, R Rogan's cool, but you know, also like, you know, he's not, he doesn't have like, he has like important moments. He's like part of the ensemble, but, but he seems to be the, the one who, since he runs that, since he flies the uh, ship that they usually are using to take people to safety or is like the captain of it, of, of it or whatever. I have a feeling that it, that he may be something, someone or somebody who we see show up in other other places. Yeah. So so it's like, like a space uh, Uber driver in a way. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was I was sort of like like you know in a way he's almost like yeah he's like I don't know I guess like like if you just read the you know like bullet points of a new hope you might go Han Solo sounds like a bus driver <laughs> you know what I mean you might you might think that right and and so like like I might be presenting that that too hard but it, or it might be presenting it too hard in that way but at the same time um he does seem like like he's taking people ever to these various places he's a, a, in a way like our part of our han solo of this story and that it like they want um they have to they have to do this one thing first before they could take leia to alderaan and uh i'm gonna say um i am fairly certain but not 100 percent that varma is that is that cargo if you will she's she's the uh, person who, who they're who they are relocating into into hiding um at that moment and um but then of course as i was talking about yesterday these those charters they don't seem to ever go according to plan like you're just supposed to take a farm boy to alderaan with an old man and then you end up on the fucking death star saving a princess and shit like that you're like like that's kind of i think what we have going on here and i'm a little bit hesitant to talk about like what the itinerary is of yeah. their flight as I think I know what it is, what I laid out is is essentially what it is. But uh, there's probably like little micro stops here and there that are like not really, you know, not really worth yeah, yeah. A, a story. Mm-hmm. And and I I I I had to piece this all out. I was like I was like you know what are you guys what are you filming today? What episode are you on? And then I would write that down, and I would, so I was able to cluster the info per ep, into the episodes. So yeah. like oh yeah so so he's he's he does show up and so like you know, Roken shows up in episode two okay, he doesn't do a lot okay, and then and then oh now he's in episode five or you know whatever it was three oh and he he has a thing in three okay so it's like able to like kind of go like yeah it seems like he's like kind of the space the spaceman driver, mm. yeah, <laughs> oh, so know. we. We just saw a whole series where people had to take public transportation in Star Wars, and I'm guessing with everyone looking for Jedi the way they are, it's not really an option for Kenobi. <laughs> yeah, well, at, at, yeah, not not with not with Princess Leia of Alderaan. I think he's able to get the public transport out of Tatooine to die you fine, but yeah, it doesn't seem like he can do that there. And I, I for all I know, they actually figure out they because you know you do kind of have like. I said it's that road trip structure, dumb and dumber structure, yeah. where you know you have the uh, the uh, the uh, two bad guys that are following in the footsteps of our of our duo, and trying trying to hunt them down. And mm. um, so yeah, there is a scene where they say kick his ass, sea bass. That happens. Okay, it doesn't happen. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So anyways, yeah. If if we um, oh shit, this dog needs more grease. All right, greasy strangler. <laughs> Yeah, the official Baymax recommendation of the year, and uh, I endorse it. <laughs> Kenobi and <laughs> his sports casuals, and then, yeah, and so and then that's so that that's like the other yeah it says he lives in a cave. Where is his walk-in wardrobe? You know, there's like I heard stuff about him. Uh, I don't. I'm not insist insinuating that he buries his clothes, but I uh, you know one of the things I haven't talked a lot about. And I, and I don't even know how to explain it necessarily because I just heard when they were filming this, he like buries stuff in the sand, and he does like some like rituals and stuff. So I think like when people like like he has like his like like funeral ritual. I think he might do one for um, Nari, um, maybe towards the end. And so, but but um, but he definitely like buries things in the sand and like digs it up and stuff like in the first episode uh so it, when people are, are gonna ask like where's his lightsaber where are the lightsabers at and shit like that yeah, i think he yeah. may actually have them actually buried in the sand like <laughs> like no like no joke so there's all kinds of shit out there if we just took a metal metal d- detector to tatooine you find all kinds of shit <laughs> you have no idea do you think he feels guilt for um nari dying I, i'm gonna guess so yeah i'm gonna guess so He's and i mean reason- Oh, that died. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, uh, I mean, he's kind of in between a rock and a hard place on that one, right? It's like, it's not, he's not responsible in the sense that he didn't kill him, but he couldn't help him. But he also has, like, you know, it, it's sort of like, you know, <clears throat> not picking on you, Chris, 
But it's like uh, fans tend to see things very, very in black and white with Star Wars. Like, for instance, Cassie and Andor. In the beginning, like, people act like Cassie and Andor is just this cold-blooded son of a bitch who just fucking killed the guy. That's actually not what happened. It's like, I think that's a complete misreading of the situation. The guy Cassie and Andor killed was already dead. The stormtroopers were there. They were going to mind probe that guy. He was fucking freaking out. He's he's injured. He can't climb up the thing. He has to climb up the thing. And it was like, do I? And I think it, in a lot of ways, it was a sympathy killing to that man. And he was killing that guy because he they were going to take the info and compromise a bunch of other people's lives. Yeah. So I don't think it's that Cassian Andor is a cold-blooded son of a bitch at all. And and, he, and, he, and even later when he has to kill Generoso's dad, he's hesitant. He doesn't do it. He doesn't snipe generously. He doesn't kill Gen- Generoso's dad. He's supposed to. But when even then he's like, you know, he's hesitant. And uh, so in this instance here, I think we have the, a sort of similar moral quandary in that he wants to help Nari every, with every fiber of his being, I have to imagine. But do you compromise Luke Skywalker's safety who's bigger to the plan? People are going to die between now and when Luke gets pubes. That's just the fucking, that's just the, the <laughs> truth. And, and they, they know that. And uh, so they're, they kind of have to just, fixer. especially well, fixer, you, you, you know, fixer was fucking buying beer when he was like 12. You fucking that dude <laughs> fixer and bigs had the fucking mustache. Like, look, we got fucking beer, dude. Yeah. They there's don't a, even card me anymore. There's a story in my head where he keeps like daring Luke to do crazy shit. Cause he's hoping Luke will just end up killing himself before Cammy can leave him for Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Bet you can't bag 16 womp rats with the T16 and blah 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 blah. Lucas, you know I can. I can too. <laughs> I can get you scoops know? too. I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, I mean it's yeah, Tarakasi, so. not Taraskasi. <laughs> I'm not doing karate, I'm doing Tarakasi in the front yard. <laughs> and I'm gonna use the force and make it clean my garage. <laughs> <laughs> it is, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I would, I would, I would rather never even even speak of that piece of shit. But since he keeps speaking about me, I can't help it. I'm a fucking petty bitch. I'm a little <laughs> bitch, like he says. <laughs> bitch, bitch, and then blocks. Who does that? Fucking bitch. because because you know that if you actually had to fucking argue your points, you couldn't actually pretend that you have the moral high ground. You don't. You're just a you're just a dirty sweatpants bitch. Uh, anyways, uh, alien representation, <laughs> love it. No, they're they're um. We were talking about this on Santa show this morning. We were talking about uh, our our friend Baymax and uh, his critiques of aliens. And the uh, the thing I was have to say, and the, the the thing is just like a fact of the matter is, I mean, like watch Phantom Menace, watch watch when you see uh, Mas Espa. Uh oh, we lost Chris. When you when you watch Mas when you see Mas Espa, what you have is you have people in alien costumes, and then you'll see their handlers with them, like the humans without mask on, because those people don't know where they're going in the hot sun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you you have to have so um so you 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 will never usually unless it's like in Solo a Star Wars story, where you have like a bar with like a menagerie of all kinds of you know aliens playing cards and stuff. Unless you're in that kind of moment. You, you won't you won't um you won't have it in the background because it's just it's just not how it works right now maybe um maybe down the road I, I think if they ever saw it as a problem um they would make it into a thing but i think we're the only ones looking at the backgrounds to to, to this level so they probably will never address that's my my take but Darth Rio, uh Dar- Darth Rio messaged me about product stuff that i saw earlier on and uh, yeah, that stuff was like was like super generic. And honestly, uh, I for protect sources don't want to get into it. But it was um, not even the stuff wasn't even really even as cool as what we're seeing now. So not really anything to get into. But Darth Dario says for a guy who lives in a cave, his clothes are really clean and crisp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is the force, do you think man? that there's like a little pond in there that he can? Wash yeah, well, he washes them for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think he pay. I think he pays uh, um, Tika yeah. the the Ajawa to lick it clean. 
I think well, she's like a Jawa laundry service. They're definitely gonna bang, aren't they? Oh, they're gonna. Oh, they 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 bang hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And and that that's what's weird is when you do in the sequel trilogy era when Kenobi's offspring does show up it's half Jawa, it's like you yeah. and McGregor about three foot with glowing glowing eyes like a like a like a like a YouTube Kathleen Kennedy featured image. It's <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> <a> very interesting. <laughs> um, the young boomer, uh, and once again, thanks everybody for being a channel member and uh, hanging out with us today. Uh, uh, GI looks better. I do wonder if I what, what's GI Grand Inquisitor. Yeah, I think. Oh, Grand yeah. Inquisitor. Yeah. Every time somebody says that, I see I see GL. And I think like George Lucas with the cap with a lowercase L. And I'm, I'm always like, what is it? Gastral intestinal looks better. No. GI Jane. Uh, GI Jane. Yeah, the Grand Inquisitor looks Careful, better. Max. I do kind of <laughs> wonder. Yeah, Will Smith will fuck you up, Max. No, he won't. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> he put on his red sweatpants and do karate. I think he learned his crowd. lesson. Uh, I do kind of wonder if they got used to the. I do kind of wonder if I just got used to the look. Um, my opinion has always been that he looked better on Dayu than on Tatooine, just because it's a bright white, big old white, shiny head on and a sunlit thing. And I think you get into a different lighting and it looks better. Kind of look like a light bulb. Yeah, a little, bit, a little, bit, a little bit like a like like an idea. And you and you know what, Max? You can't kill an idea. I saw that in Batman, and now I walk around like I have a philosophy on life. Uh, Baymax says it's Rex and his Springsteen covers man outfit. <laughs> oh, oh, Bruce, he's the boss, the boss Nass. Um, Will Morgan says I don't know if I trust that. I think they were going for the same feeling you got when Han shot first. <laughs> Your mom shot first. Yeah, um, he was. Re <laughs> I think he was responding to something that you were talking earlier. Talking yeah. Earlier. Uh, you know, I kind of like like think about me, Max. Is I just kind of like live in the moment. You know what I mean? I know. I. You know, I'm like talk, take pictures yeah. with my phone. Nah, yeah. man. I'm living live in the moment. You know what I'm saying? You give it. Yeah, yeah. You might. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, Anthony says, "Hey, everyone, just wanted to say hello." Listing, uh, listening live during while I'm working. Can't wait for Kenobi. Hey Anthony, how are you doing, man? Anthony. Yeah, I uh, I can't wait for Kenobi either. I I, I have I got to be honest. I I think that it's um, in a weird way. That's like, weird. No, in a weird way, I'm like almost bummed about it in a certain light because of what's coming down the road is so outside of the purview of what I'm like the most interested in. And like Kenobi's always been one of the characters that I'm the most fascinated with, and I love the prequels. So he's like, and it's probably like my favorite character from the prequel films. Um, just you know, in the sense that it like he's the only one who's not like deeply flawed, you know what I mean? So he's like the most likable, and uh, like you know, compared to Anakin, anyways. And so, like, after this, like, like I'm fascinated by what, what Cassian's gonna have and where they go after this, but I'm like, you know, after this one, um, I don't know if we have anything that really touches these nerves. So I'm both excited, but then I'm going to be a little bit bummed once we get past it, and there's like nothing to look forward to like that. So my 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 hope is that right after they go, Kenobi got the most views we ever had on something on Disney Plus, and we're doing Kenobi Part Two. <laughs> well, it's so it's funny that we're getting um we ha we haven't had this for Star Wars yet. We're getting the first two episodes in one night, so yeah, it's not going to last as long as like Boba even Boba, and that was only six episodes. So Mando kind of dragged out a bit two four seven. months yeah seven, seven episodes yeah so um this one's gonna be over in a month isn't it yeah two yeah and then... basically oh. i mean we basically get three episodes uh over the course of a week five days you know? yeah yeah which which the uh the, the very greedy man child in me loves give it all to me now i want spoilers i can't wait for shit and like i'm all about that Another part of me is like, uh, would would have been kind of nice to let this one, you know, stretch out a bit. But once we get to something like Cassian, where it's like twelve episodes too, hopefully Cassian gives us two episodes, um, and maybe that's maybe maybe though maybe that's how they'll mitigate a bit of the uh, length of um, yeah. of that series run. I still haven't seen the uh, new episode of uh, Moon Knight either. I'm like one episode behind. Me and the Robert, kids, yeah. yeah, my kids wanted me to wait to watch it with them, and we just couldn't schedule. it. So hopefully today I get to see see that that new. Jesse, your camera's gone really blurry, dude. 
Really? Yeah. Weird. Do I look blurry to, to you, to everyone? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah I can okay. hear you. Uh-huh. You just you just look really like out of out of focus. Weird, yeah. My my camera's in focus, so it's definitely this thing. I'll take myself put myself back in. See. Any better? <laughs> Doesn't matter, Jason. Yeah. Okay. Just people just want, looking at us anyway. Just want people to <laughs> just want people to look me in the eye. Look me can't do that eye. right now. I can't do look that. Me, look me in the eye. Look me in the eye and hear my spoilers. Hear them. I get scopes too. I'm smart. Baymax, uh, <laughs> Kenobi, Kenobi buries an Anakin voodoo doll on the sand and laughs. Yeah, we were um, – so yesterday on the show, I was talking a little bit um, about how, you know, what's like Kenobi's reaction when he sees Darth Vader for the first time. And it's like, oh, my God, what have they done to you? And I'm so sorry. And Baymax is like, he was like, he cut off his arms and legs and he's all, what have they done to you? <laughs> you did it, man. You're the one who, who cut off his arms and legs. But um, to be fair, he, he did have the high ground and uh, he did he did go for the move that would have killed him. He had no choice. He had no choice but to turn his friend into barbecue. I just don't get the high ground thing, man. It's the high ground, bro. Come on. Cano- Darth Maul had the high ground. You, you were, you were, you were. Yeah, Just me, it's a, it's a lesson I don't understand. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't get it. Well, it's like nobody calls Marty chicken. Like, yeah, that's not in the original movie. They just made that shit up. You know? But okay. it was in the second and the third. It dominated the trilogy. Therefore, legit, I say. But yeah, I am with you though. It would have been nice if it was in the first one. Uh, what else we got next? Um, casting and or killing that dude had the same effect as Han shooting first. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It it, it it's like clearly like like that moment with Cassian was sh- was sh- was to show us that Cassian will do what he must do in order to survive and for the mission, whatever for the greater good. However you want to you want you want to look at it, but but people completely take it that he'll just kill somebody because it's like. You know what he's I mean? Not it, he's not a bad dude. Yeah. A, Look, here, here's the whole point of that scene. It's so that you know this character is willing to kill, to die for the cause, one way or the other. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? The, the cause is bigger than any one person. Because at the end of the movie, they all die to save everyone else. Like, it's the whole point. It mirrors, just he sacrifices himself, you know, for the greater good. Like, it's it's just saying that there that there's no easy choices to make, you know? Like, it's not, I'm a badass, a badass. Looking like he wasn't like standing over him, taking photos and shit, showing his fucking DL 44s, you know. <laughs> you know, look at these guns. Like he wasn't doing. It. I just, I don't know. Like it's because I blame Return of the Jedi for making all the the Republic commandos look like fucking, you know, Ken dolls, and Dodonas, yeah. and fucking noobs <laughs> and shit. You know. Um. Somebody, um, Robert St. Clair just sent me this, this, uh, this uh, picture that I, I want to put on the screen here for a second because it's hilarious. Um, he's, he's talking about what, what we were just talking about. Hold on, let me, let me share that again and pull this up because I think it's funny. All right, so we, we, got our, we got our buddy here, right? And then, okay, where's, where's the image? All right, so this is, this is what he said. <laughs> old ben's electronics would have been a competition with big ben he- healy's shop on tattooing <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> I-, I appreciate it and max kind of reminds me of bob uger <laughs> baseball oh, no. <laughs> remember well, when he went remember when he went let wesley hang out with that kid who had aids I just remember when he was he was the first color comment like the the celebrity commentator they got on WrestleMania. You, know, oh, you could right. fit right in with everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that was that WrestleMania four? Yeah, it's for a few years. He was like the the face of that sort of thing until Ventura sort of took that over. But yeah, got it. Yeah, 
Um, Young Boomer says, uh, Indira will probably infiltrate the railroad and go, aha, it was me all along. And removes her face to reveal she's Reva all along fulfilling the prophecy. It's been her show all along. That's well, you know, sounds like Kenobi it, season two is called Reva's Revenge. I don't know if you're yeah. aware of that, Jason. Like, Trademark that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, Soundwave says, so when you add up the runtime of Boba and the Mando seasons, they are really not that different in length. I think maybe 15 to, to 20 minutes. Yeah. I mean, like, like I, I said, uh, I don't know, you know, I don't have like run times. I don't even know if they've finished the actual final edits on all of these yet. But you're looking at that 45 minute mark. You know what I mean? So um, one could be a little bit longer than that one, maybe even a little shorter for all I know. I, I I feel like that forty five to fifty minute mark though is probably where they're going to generally come in. It's just just my guess. And um, if something was longer, we would know based off of like like the production time and how much work they were doing and stuff like that. And um, it just doesn't. That's that's where I'm pretty fucking certain that that that, that, that they're going to fall. Um, it's a it's a good it's a good episodic length to um, to aim for. I think. Almost all Disney Plus shows have been four and a half hours of footage, regardless of episode count. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's it's almost. I mean, this isn't exactly a one to one truth, but it's almost like the assembly cut of a of a reasonable film. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and because they're able to still like kind of keep everything. Tibor, how's it going, man? Um, you can get to very dark places if you start to think about hygiene on Tatooine right it's true yeah it's gotta i mean everyone's gotta smell like ball sweat on tatooine if you want to if you ever want to go to like uh, one of those 4 d um screenings of of kenobi or something that they do on oh what's that smell it smells like ball sweat oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> john c Riley's under your desk you know he's like <laughs> <laughs> it's a living it's, it's a living <laughs> <laughs> Baymax says, "Bitch boy is the malfunctioning mouse droid of Scoops wandering, wandering Twitter, whistling his tweets, trying to find someone who cares." To his, I heard that too, and other blatantly obvious information. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll, I'll be, yeah. I'll be honest. Uh, not saying that I necessarily like like that, but uh, or like like the the reality of the situation. But uh, when it comes to Scoops. It is really a game of what have you done for me lately, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean. At the at the end of the of the uh, the a day, it, um, you know, getting a couple of casting things right, um, back in the, the you know after I talked about Inquisitors. Oh, I'm gonna put this out so Ward can't get it. Like that's what he like literally said, and um and then did it. It's like hey, good on you, man. Good on. I'm proud of you, son. Go go go! Get your red sweatpants on. Do karate in the front yard. I'll be out there. I'll maybe I'll play catch with you. Okay. You're a big boy now. <laughs> Inquisity minds want to know words. <laughs> go go practice your jump kicks. It'll be okay, bud. But um, at the same time, uh, you know, getting uh, no retreat, hanging. no surrender was better than karate kid. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll just and, and uh, I'm 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 okay with uh, with uh, saying that you, you know you grab some low hanging fruit and and you fed people that day, but I have given them steak fucking dinners consistently. I deep fake there. myself into best of the best. <laughs> well, Jason, we're living in the golden age of making Star Wars on that, aren't we? I I I I feel like that is the case. <laughs> there I, are some who feel we've entered the dark ages about eight months ago. I'm not saying who who showed up around that time. <laughs> some feel, Chris. <laughs> oh, some some would be wrong. Some would be wrong, wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna let, let, let let's do one moment of self suck. Can we can we do one moment of self suck? <laughs> Hold do, am on. I, Am I entitled to that yeah. after in you know, my Rogan position? Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna Joe Rogan this. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna just gonna throw out. Um, Jordan Mason says that you don't need me, and you know what? You don't need anybody. But I I am just going to say, 
I got I got some scoops, right? I got some casting, right? Oh, look at me. I'm a big boy. Really? Really? I mean, I'm just going to say, comparatively speaking, I can self-suck. I don't think you can see yours past your tummy. I know because I can't either. Um, yeah, so here we go. I mean, I'm I'm just gonna just gonna throw it out there that I just don't think we're doing the same thing um, in this day and age. But um, <laughs> but but you heard. But keep you heard going. That too. If you go down a whole thirty minutes, you'll get to the when I had the Inquisitors. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, uh, just season two of uh, Visions. Like no fucking shit. We all knew that, dude. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, like it's getting, no, getting kind of, getting kind of no around. fucking shit, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, so I'm just going to say we don't do the same fucking thing, buddy. And uh, if you want to keep sizing up, let's keep sizing up. But I will tell you, you're going to look stupid and I don't really want to even have you in my life or talk about you anymore. But since you watch whatever I say, and whatever all the shit I do because you're my super fan. By the way, um, Jordan Mason was a Jason Ward super fan, um, gaming me all the time. You got any spoilers for me? What are you hearing? What are you hearing? Every fucking <laughs> See, day Chris, he was a You gotta nuisance. be careful. Did, this dude, doesn't you know, happen to you. You gotta be that's careful, what, Chris. That's what you I know? did. <laughs> but um you know. You're already wearing red sweats, Chris. I'm just letting oh, you know. No! You very careful. You're Tim. You're Tim in disguise. <laughs> He's a changeling. <laughs> See, this is, this is a dangerous path you walk. <laughs> but X Wing was like, "Why can't he just make fun of me?" <laughs> Will Smith's wife auditioned for the Grand Inquit slap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She does have some great Inquisitor vibes, doesn't she? Um, <laughs> Baymax says, if Kenobi is the smash hit we hope for, they they will find a way to write a story for a second season. They have a lot of time to work with. Yeah, I I, I can I completely agree. Um, I think the one thing I will say about continuing Kenobi is what you end up with is you end up it not being a callback. You end up with it not being a callback to the prequels, a callback to the original trilogy. It then becomes where it's living within itself. Like, for instance, um, Roken. Roken needs Kenobi's help. We end up you know, that kind of thing. Other people that have been in his life that he that that may know his secret, for instance. That's where we end up going. And um, because this one, I think it kind of does cash most of the main beats but the one thing i will say is that it with qui-gon showing up at the end we do end up with the potentiality of a story where qui-gon and obi-wan kenobi could develop um more of the mystical side of things if they wanted to and i'm always a little bit a little bit hesitant of them doing that to such a degree i like how they've done it in this story i might be in the minority here man but mm -hmm. i really think that if they do anymore they're better served using that de-aging technology and giving us some clone wars adventures with these characters and yeah continuing this this particular era with kenobi you know like this just put it mm -hmm. out there because andrew's going to cover this territory pretty good you know like you don't need much more in this area but you can put the him and him hayden together put a little bit of that deep fake on you and good to go you know yeah oh for sure a lot of people I mean, want that. Yeah. Uh, and it's especially as you know we start to get into the the age where where the clone wars kids are starting to have kids and they're starting to like watch things and get like disney plus for their children stuff like that you know that's that's not too far off where they're going to start you know procreating <laughs> little weirdos but they're going to start making more of themselves replicating and um yeah uh Gr griffin thanks for the super chat man you could always just just dm me though but uh griffin thank you uh th there's a reason that some people live on twitter uh, you could say that again you know what i mean you can really say that again i was i was talking about this the other day it's like you know like everybody today is mad about um about what's his name buying twitter and oh, just wow. from my perspective i don't know i don't really know what the difference between uh i don't know why i care anymore about about what's his name buying twitter versus jack yeah 
I mean, I really don't, I really don't really see a, a huge difference here. Um, if you, if, if politics are your, your thing, uh, what's the difference? And then, uh, on top, on top of that, um, Twitter brings out, just brings out the worst of us for the most part. Like if it wasn't for the fact that you, if you're in doing any kind of textual media, you kind of need Twitter. Like Twitter is important for that. And, um, but if I didn't have to do it, if I wasn't doing making Star Wars, I would not be on Twitter at, at all, at all, because it seems to bring out the best of the Iron Sheik. Except for Iron Sheik, yeah, Iron Sheik is the is the best. Iron Sheik is the best. You know, he fucks Twitter and makes it humble. I will say that much about the Sheik. He does fuck Twitter and make it humble. And uh, I humble brag, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So so high strong. Yeah. But um. But anyway, yeah. What what we we're, were talking about, but with like continuing Kenobi. Is like like you know you do end up with 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 Kenobi able to see Qui Gon Jinn, they can see each other now. So now you know that Kenobi is on the path to immortality, yes. retention after death, however you want you want to view it. But um, you know there can still be more to it if they want to. That's that's the only logical place I can see them going as a continuation of what what's been established. But I do think that they were smart in the way that that they did it in this. In that, like, in the sense that the Sith, they can't have hope, and and they can't have any hope and, and stuff like that. So they they're the opposite. They when when you go down to the Sith, they like you've completely given up hope, like, and you're dominated by like a Sith Lord, for instance. So they could never do what 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 they're doing because they could never get to that that spiritual place. Like that levity is just not on the table for them. And it's just that you keep using the word hope so much that maybe they'll replace it with respect. You know, like it'll be a new respect, you know. Rule with respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you're, never gonna gonna you're never gonna let that go, You're never gonna let that go. No. <laughs> no. No, I will not. <laughs> no. They wanted me to learn something and I've learned it. I think. So the uh, young boomer um was saying uh I will always push for live action Crystal Crisis on Utapau. Obi Wan and Anakin buddy movie, General Grievous, more lighter tone story arc would make for a great straight to Disney Plus movie or second series. Yeah, I mean, uh, and you know, there, there's, there's a lot of stories that it that you could tell things that were in the Clone Wars that you can maybe even tell from a different character's perspective and would allow for like live action stuff if they ever wanted to. Um, but. At the same time, at the same time, um, I'm curious how we feel about it. I, I guess fans are always going to want more of what they like, no matter what it is, whether it's a good idea or not. They're going to want more. But um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm curious how it's how we feel when we see the flashback to you, you know Attack of the Clones esque era, um, Obi Wan and Anakin, and uh, training you know, and stuff like that. Do we end up wanting more? Or do we feel satiated when we see that? And with the other places that we're going to get Anakin like in um Ahsoka. I think the obvious thing would be there's still room for old uh Luke uh, around the Mando time to have a little force ghost chat with Obi-Wan. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's still room for those kinds of little cameos and stuff to do, you mm-hmm. know? Like and if there's a Jedi Academy thing, like there could be you know they don't have to just at some point, you know, Luke cuts himself up, but that, there's there's room there for that sort of thing, you know. Don't you think the uh, Jedi Academy thing's the uh, tales of the Jedi? That's what I personally think. You know, I think that's Rob. You know, I think that's um, we go on there. Yeah. No? We, yeah. We we yeah we we could theorize about tales of the Jedi, you know, endlessly. Like like my my take on it, makes sense. it just makes sense that it's like Je- uh, Luke's Academy, like to me anyway. Um, who, who you know I don't I don't know jack yeah. shit. It's just my personal yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, your opinion matters, man. Thank you. Thank what you. you think matters. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm with you though. I, I I'm I'm with you in that it like like what could it be? It's I I I don't for a second believe it's the old Tales of the Jedi. No. Tales of the comic. Jedi comic book. Um right. but you know, the the one the one thing that I think was it I don't, I don't remember, remember if it was me and Baymax talking or Baymax said I I can't remember. So I don't hope I'm not stealing anybody's idea here. But I remember like someone was suggesting when we were talking about 
like how like Jedi Fallen Order is like part two is not going to be called Jedi Fallen Order two. We don't think we're we're here. We think it's going to be called like Jedi. I don't Save know. Self suck. Fallen respect. Yeah. Fallen, <laughs> fallen respect. Um, yeah, the respect fell. <laughs> <laughs> Jedi, Jedi, Rising Order. Oh my God, you guys! But we know it doesn't happen, so we're like, whatever. But um, but anyways, yeah, like like you know, tells of the Jedi could be the umbrella for all of that stuff too. I mean, who knows? Rise of Roken. But but Rise of Roken, yeah. Hey. Um, yeah. So Max just texted me and said the audio is disconnecting. I see teeth marks on my cord. Yeah, it was Mohawk. Mohawk wins again. Mohawk wins again. Mohawk the cat wins again. Got to Max in a drunken stupor 24 hours ago. She was just like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> That's our man. She's like, I have no recollection of this. <laughs> uh, Baymax says, comparing scoop dongs, it's like the redwood and the acorn. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> I like scoop dongs. That's a scoop great, dongs. That's a good that'll that'll be our comic book. <laughs> scoop dongs. I like that. Yeah, but yeah. So yeah, we um we have I we have we have some really good um I'm gonna call them atomic bomb level scoops from Kenobi coming. the the big The biggest stuff is yet to come, so it's gonna be it's gonna be good. It's gonna be fun. I told one of my very, very trusted friends about what is coming. I got, I got a little teary eyed. He's like, I was like, I'm getting a little, I'm tearing up a little bit. And then I laughed at him like Ali G. I'm like, you're crying, you're crying. Ah. No, you I'm told kidding. me you wouldn't tell anyone this story. <laughs> <laughs> everybody knows you can't cry that you have no heart or feelings. So it's, don't worry. I did not. And everybody knows I didn't out you. <laughs> okay. Scarecrow shed no tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Oh yeah. Um, just because uh, I figure like I am getting t- tweeted about it. Like everybody's like, where's that where's that thing coming? Uh Aria just uh texted me and said, um, is General Grievous and Kenobi whatsoever as a flashback? No, I, I don't believe so. I don't believe we're gonna see General Grievous in anything. Um, anytime soon that I know of, I, I I would love to see Grievous. I love. I mean, I mean that Grievous is honestly like, and it would be a badass, weird thing to like do. Like, I always love the uh, story about like, how he becomes Grievous. Like, yeah. that would be like a really cool, like, like, like one hour, 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 ten long movie about that dude, just like how he becomes it and like gets turned he's, into it. Like, I, I kind of wish that there was an anthology. Like, to be very turned. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt you, Jason. No, no, but, okay, um, go ahead. Uh, he's got it like before he actually turns into like the the robot. He's got a badass alien design, from what I remember. Mm-hmm. From what I yeah. remember, he looks pretty pretty fucking badass before he turns into the whole robot. <clears throat> well, that's why the yeah. series Tales of the Clone Wars would have been a good anthology series for live action. You know, you can do these little two episode Soft three works. episode arcs one episode one offs you know what i mean just do a bunch of random shit although i'm sure production's like shut up rob stop giving us a bunch of random <laughs> shit to fucking decide okay <laughs> for, i'm i'm, I'm going to seven episodes. i'm going to butcher this name do you know of a japanese director named atushi takauchi bro i i barely remember x-wing's name you know like yeah well his name is x-wing why That's like his real name well, so he he did like Ghosts in the Shell, and he did like um, like Mass Effect stuff and everything like that, and um, yeah, Ghosts in the Shell, Ghosts in the Shell two, Avalon. It's like it's like a it's like a um, you know, and he was um, um, Blue Drop. I'm trying to see see what other um, Xeno Gears, the video game. Uh, anyways. Armitage three. I don't know if any of this is anything that you are familiar with, but he directed an episode of the Clone Wars called Lair Lair of Grievous, and it's like a twenty two minute long episode, and it's just um, about Grievous's castle 
and like he gets torn apart throughout it and he's like putting on pieces as he's getting like torn apart and put back together and shit it's pretty badass it's a really good really cool episode awesome. and um it's definitely one of the ones I'm, I'm gonna gonna recommend to you that you like check out but awesome director an anime anime director who came over and they invited to a to a do a star wars episode but um but but that kind of thing is i would love for them to have an ongoing anthology series on disney plus where they just can do a one hour standalone film Sh one hour i say short films i mean like one hour long but like short films in star wars would be the the coolest thing that uh, that they can do because like how grievous was made is never going to fit into a i don't think going to fit into a larger larger movie it doesn't really seem like like that's that's the kind of opportunity where you could put it in live action and it would just be fucking great it would just be really really cool to like see stuff like that, that that's what i'm hoping for in the future just and the I'm visual effects are, they're still so hard for those mm -hmm. sorts of things you know like they, they, they're i know it's all come a long way but you know if you want it to match up with what you'd seen on the cinema you know mm -hmm. like there has to be some larger thing around that somehow or some i don't know like yeah i really wish man this is the bummer that cinefx went down because i got a good sense of where the money was going on productions they even covered the mando i think like their last episode the last issue or something like and um their next to last issue but like that that there that's it we don't have real in-depth look and those galaxy episodes or gallery episodes don't fucking cut it compared to sin effects. Like, no, they're, so. they're, they're very, they're very fucking the work of the word of the day self suck. You know what I mean? It, it just, yeah, is. they're very it's, PR ish. So I just, I would, I would, I, oh, man. yeah, no, it's, I, wish, it's I, would, I know. Some, yeah. That's what I'm trying to yeah, say. I just self suck. It's just, it's super suck hard. It's self. super hard to do that. I couldn't imagine having to get through all the approvals of texturing and lighting for one grievous episode you know what i mean when they got six other episodes well, to do well well, well he, here's here's yeah and here, here's where i didn't actually finish earlier um in that episode uh you see that he has the statue of himself in his castle and it's from before his transformation and you, you yeah. see his in the you see, in that statue you can see what he looked like before and he was just sort of like this like like almost i don't know like just this like like archaic warrior sort of like yeah just really cool looking and uh um so so that would allow them to not have to actually match that necessarily they would be able to do something new because the whole time he is that warrior until he is six million dollar manned and put back together into general grievous so i i, I don't think but, uh, i think they would have it kind of easy on something like that if this they is want. where i really appreciate the what if series because they went super cosmic with that story because they could do it in animation Mm -hmm. You know, you couldn't do that story in live action unless it were a film kind of yeah. thing, you know, like. Yeah. Kind of that's you. Kind hey, of stuff. sorry, I was having connection issues with my <clears throat> mic. Yeah, you're going to talk right now. The, 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 the kitties are revolting. <laughs> no, I got it. Well, I got a new cord. Oh, nice. You went down, went down to the radio shack. No, <laughs> <laughs> went to my room. Uh Oh, uh oh, here we go. Again. I heard it, but can, can I just I'm add to your point, Chris. Jason, about the uh, you want you know, you're speaking about the one hour specials or one hour, you know, film short films and that. Mm -hmm. Marvel at the end of this year, they've got two coming out which are about you know, one hour long. So they got the Werewolf by Night one and they got the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. So mm -hmm. it's 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 a strong possibility that it will come to Star Wars sooner or later. Like, yeah, one hour special, you know what I mean? So we, we never know, we might get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, well, because like like that's one thing that, though too. If you consider it for a subscription based platform, like let's just pretend if they did something like that, and if they didn't drop it all six episodes at once, so they just randomly drop them. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm only subscribing for Star Wars and there's a month or two without Star Wars content hitting, you drop that one hour thing. Now it, I'm gonna subscribe to see that one thing. They're gonna get my they're, and they're gonna basically be charging me eight dollars for it at least and so that's that's a, a not a bad model like if like like the, those specials are probably going to be good for the marvel people who only subscribe to the marvel stuff yeah you know so yeah but but i, I think a droid story is our first 
tow tip into the into that 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 realm. Sorry. So, just yeah, can't believe that's a thing. All right. It's R two and three PO. What do you mean you can't believe it's a thing? It's the most Look, fucking. What are you hating on now? It's dude? the most like like. I was making fun it. of this concept in 1986 at Star Tours at the Star Tours opening when my uncle told me they were making three new Star Wars films that were going to feature the droids and not the Jedi, and I was like, "That's the stupidest thing I've ever." Heard. They did feature the Jedi. Your uncle's wrong. It's fake stupidest thing I've ever heard. Fake news. <laughs> fake news, uncle. Well, remember back then they would they said. It was from the perspective of the droids. 1986, bro. Fuck, I was still in my dad's bullsack back then. <laughs> I have a comment, but I won't do it. It's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Slow hanging fruit. But... <laughs> um, Baymax says they made action figures of pre-Cyborg Grievous. I got it. Yeah, was, th- was that originally in that ILM-based comic book series where the ILM developers got to tell their star wars stories was was that was that where they were they is that where that first sh- um showed up with well, that visionaries thing yeah yeah was that where the grievous the first i ever saw grievous was that it was actually that really cool clone wars one-off they did where yes. they're all yeah hunkered down he's taking them all out and shit. Jack- oh, shit. shaggy yeah. shaggy remember shaggy he was like yeah. shaggy from scooby-doo but he was a Jedi named Shaggy, and he freaks out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, um, this story, the the pre Cyborg Grievous story came came like in that 2007 times. So, all right. So we're 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 losing Max. She's having too many connection issues today. She says, "All right, Max, but you're always welcome to come back, Max, if you, however you want to do it." But anyways, um. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, anyways, the, um, but like that's the kind of story that I, I, I would, I wouldn't mind, mind them making, and that would allow them, and and that would be a good place to to do some of that kind of Clone War stuff and flashback stuff without it being like an investment in in a in a whole series all all of the time, like Anakin and like I do feel like like Anakin and Obi Wan, um, content is a strong possibility for for stuff that they can do, entertaining low low stakes stories with but at the same time i don't know if i if it's something that you would necessarily want to do six episodes on you you see what i'm saying like like yeah and you like have to sell wars. me on it star wars lends itself to an anthology you know yeah quite well and and i think it's the best place for them to do like to develop new characters to see what hits it's do do a one hour after thing versus a whole series you know like you could eat that's I think it's more manageable in terms of it's more manageable creatively. It's more difficult financially because of the various you can't reuse a lot of sets and so you have to get very creative, like how that's gonna go down, you know, like yeah, across several different every if everything's a little different, unless it's like literally they're gonna release two or three a year and they're just one little one off productions, you know. Then they might be able to write it off in that they could reuse these virtual sets that they're building for other productions down the line. Like they're using it to say, "Hey, we don't have, we don't have a jungle uh, undersea minecart sequence here. We'll build that shit, shit that they can keep reusing to build assets." You know, It'll make a lot of sense. Also, I mean, with 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 things like the uh, the uh, volume, for instance, like Jabim, like who knows to what extent, like who knows how much they built yeah. for. Uh, for Jabim digitally in uh in on real engine or whatever the fuck it is and um that if they can just simply reuse again anytime that it that they need to it's that's one of the the uh, things because like when it came down to the, the uh, physical sets i've always reported that they're very modular like the ex- exteriors of um most of the mando s- sets that we have and stuff like that they're just these like one room of your house one and room. then and then they yeah, and then they like connect, and they could just change them in configurations, and they'll just add some different tech dressing on it in about fifteen minutes. It seems like I don't know fifteen minutes, but you know what I mean, like really quickly. Like, let's put some like different paneling, like circular things with some plants on it or some shit. But, like there you go, new place now. And so so when it comes to a lot of that stuff, it's it's completely it's completely possible that it, they could um, do a lot of that stuff for cheap. But yeah. But also, it, it like it like it would be you know it it would be nice if they if they would 
go that way, like with Mando stuff too. Like like just having Din Djarin before he's the guy that we know in the series just bounty hunting. Just yeah. a fun episode, like one offs and shit like that. Would it would be nice. So but yeah. but um that that's why I am hoping <laughs> that I, I don't know what to expect from from a droid story. It might be the dumbest thing ever. It might might be surprisingly brilliant for all we know. Like a part of me feels like if they decided to do an R2 and 3PO story out of the blue and it gets into production, like there must be an angle to it that's fucking cool. Yeah. But yeah. but I also know that it's like Boba a, Fett tells me otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> it's 50 50. Well, yeah, the, 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 the uh, droid story ones are the best over. We don't know a lot about it, so I don't want to overspeak. But the droid story one um, doesn't, it's, 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 I don't think it's even being made here. I don't think it's a Favreau thing. And, um, like I, I think we're kind of getting a, the the vibe for for what Favreau does well and maybe what he doesn't, you know, at this point. Can I just say, like, speaking of sets and Mando, remember that story you put out like a few months ago? I don't know when, but it was like about a top. You saw a top or something, and then it came down, and then it came up again. And it was part of the game, and that. Did you ever find out what what that was all about? Because I just it just came to me when you're talking about the sets. Yeah, no, it it um it was kind of funny because um. We, we, it looks like it's the same thing in that game, in oh, that yeah. um, Star Wars is it Hunters? Hunters, yeah, Hunters, yeah, and it, like you could see it, like like almost almost the same exact thing. The trailer, it was the same. But then, but then uh, I was watching, I think like Disney Gallery or something, and there's this one shot, and you can see Favreau, and um, he's like literally under the same tarp. So they were, like, were they were hanging the same tarps, and uh, of the see, same peek-a-boo. awnings. Yeah, so basically, it just didn't get any screen time. But it, but it was there. So, yeah, I, I don't think that ended up being anything. That was just a uh, something of curiosity at the time. When I'm in the tarp, you call me tarp, and you know, you're like, "Stop it, John! It's not funny." <laughs> Baymax says, "Production question: Can they take assets from the animated shows, put them into the volume engine, and level level it up? Example: When they got a starting point for Lothal, and don't have to start from scratch." you know no like like the thing that you're seeing right now in unreal engine 5 is something called nanite so it's where they're using realistically photographed objects right from 4k or 8k whatever how many k's photography they're doing and it's rendering it in real time with the way it renders on screen uh lighting in space so it's it's rendering what you see on screen, not generating a whole engine at once. It's a different way of rendering those effects. So you can get the photorealistic stuff. It can't add uh, detail to pre-existing assets. So, yeah, I, I, I think he may be going with like, like, can you use it as a starting point? Maybe that's where he, maybe that's more of what he means. Like if you have look, uh, those, those, those animation assets are only built to what you see in shots. Yeah. So like, <laughs> they, they, they like, and even in video games, man, like when you're like, "Hey, that building's great!" Like right behind, it's fucking nothing. It's just like, nothing. <laughs> it's it's as yeah. it's as set dressing as what you see down there in in uh, in Kanto or whatever. You know, like it's it's mm-hmm. there's planks right underneath the. <laughs> yeah. So and and who knows, like, like those may not be OBJ files. Those may be some weird kind of. What's an OBJ FBA file? Guy object it's a dot object files or there's uh, there's there's f the fbx files there's obj files there's a file type that's used per whatever animation suite that they're using also whatever they use for rendering and just dragging them into unreal is not really it's not really conducive you know so, so hey, if, look, I, I told you go ahead no if we let like like let's pretend we are going to do the grand inquisitor in cgi um at the end of the day they they wouldn't start the 3d wireframe model that they were going to be building for this live action production from the original one they would just completely start from scratch maybe they would look at it as reference and and spirit of but that that would be about the extent of it right right i think what you're going to see moving forward over time is assets developed exclusively for unreal engine 5 or or more or 4 whatever Mm -hmm. and then those assets are used interchangeably but taking things that were made two years ago one year ago 10 years ago is not you know in yeah. not even designed for real time designed for animation animation assets are not 
the same as I say it's like the uh, the uh, rigging isn't the, right, correct? Yeah, it's a, it's all it's all super it's super hodgepodge. Like it's, yeah, gets the job done kind of shit. And plus the shit's overseas, so who knows what half that shit's like anyway. I mean, you could kind of see the seams on some of that stuff now in the Bad Batch. Like you can see what is an older asset versus something newish. You know, like it's. So I get what you're saying, but it would be easier just to use block modeling and build assets from scratch and it would be. But I do think in the way that um, on the film side, how like before everyone at ILM, once they had everything on The Force Awakens was going into, all the the ships were going into uh, digital, they were each making their own little pieces, their own little kit bashing pieces. And some smart producer was like, no, we're not fucking duplicating these efforts every time we go to bat. So they went and bought one of every model kit that ever existed, you know, that was ever used in the original trilogy and then modeled or scanned in every little piece and then built a suite that everyone can use. That you'll see moving forward, you know, Mm -hmm. for certain, you know. Yeah. I told you, like, looking at Fallen Order, I'm like, that. I easily see a, a near future where the assets built for one of those games are used interchangeably with real time, like, you know, production, like I very quickly, but not with what's already been made. You know, right. On the animation side, at least. Right. Yeah. I, I, I kind of, I, I kind of hope that, yeah, that we see, like, I kind of hope that, that we do see an increase in visual effects on Disney plus, as opposed to just more of a streamlining, because that will be the thing that after a couple of years of nonstop Star Wars productions, if that doesn't grow too, and it just becomes like, oh, we, we could start to visualize what they're going to do because they are using the same pieces over and over. I, I, I hope that doesn't happen. I don't know if it would, though. But uh, Baymax says, the environments, vehicles, and lighting in the Bad Batch was top drawer. Sometimes you forget it's animation. So... Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things that like I, I remember hearing Dave Filoni talk about one time was he was saying like when he started, he thought of things one way in animation. So like they would actually like build like the, like the buildings in Coruscant and they would waste all this time. Then he's like, eventually I learned that we could just 3D paint that <laughs> and just start using like painting and, and do a hybrid hmm. of that kind of stuff. And so yeah. like like a lot Brute of some of that forcing. stuff brute forcing production is not not a good idea Mm -hmm. you know build only what you need and if someone can't tell it's real then don't worry about it what are you proving to yourself you're proving nothing you're just losing time and time is the one thing you you can get money you can get you know you can get talent you can get ideas time you can't ever get back that's it so it's true yeah yeah, what one time too he was talking about Clone Wars, um, the rigging of those like models and the work that they had done. And I, I think it was between six and ten thousand dollars for each character that we saw on screen to 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 create them. And then by the time they got to the third season, they had jumped up so far uh that they pretty much had to like lose most of the original stuff or almost remake it. So it was still a few more thousand dollars on those rigs and those models to like get them up to up to like snuff for 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 like that production and stuff like that. So yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird because it's it seems like as you would think they have these assets, the assets sort of become outdated in a, in a way. Too. Well, I can tell you, I've been on productions where you know one studio took two to four weeks to conceptualize, model, rig, and complete a character, and then I worked on another production where it took them six months. Yeah, you know, and it's just like you know, and and I'm gonna tell you, no visual difference. It's just it's just how much money are they willing to to waste? You know, yeah. like you you just look at it, you're like, this is ridiculous. So, yeah. you know, knowing how to get the most money for your your most bang for your buck, right? Yeah, is, um, yeah. With like with like Clone Wars, like if you take like Anakin from season one and then look like at Anakin like season four or three point five, like where that jump up does happen. Like it was mostly like on Clone Wars in the facial, like in the facial, um, the ability for those wooden actors to be able to, um, to um, express, which and I always just always loved George Lucas's fuck you that he made the all of the heroes wooden people. That'll teach him fuck you guys. Um, Baymax says, uh, look at the how rich later seasons of the Clone Wars were compared to the earlier ones. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't even haven't read what you said. We're on the same page. 
as they re as they reuse and level up environments for the volume shouldn't we see that kind of deeper richer quality i'm i'm yeah that that's one of the questions that i've had that i i haven't ever heard i don't know if they know i don't know if any or 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 i'm sure they do but i haven't heard them speak on it i don't know what the what the true limitations of the volume are the only thing that i i was ever told was from a friend in the industry who had used it excuse me and said that it was going to be very good for western vibe western pacing but once you want to get really fast with lots of movement and frame and stuff like that it just does not work and and it, and um i don't know if, i don't know exactly exactly what all of the lim limitations of it are i know some of it is rendering and stuff like that but some of it is actually like how when you move the camera how in fast ways how it looks with that background where the background becomes artificial so I, i'm curious if they if they ever talk about about that like maybe when we get to cassian maybe they will talk about why they went with the, the more practical route with cassian uh, in reality it may it may just simply be we don't have we didn't have a volume we had access to because fucking batman was using it <laughs> out there at pinewood it might just be like that simple in reality but it could also it could also be that it um you can't do a lot of those things in the volume so it works fine with din and uh gregory just walking down you know the street but when we yeah crazy shit there's a bit of a uh a stumbling block if you will yeah if you want to do shaky handheld camera running down uh you know if you want to do um saving private ryan uh, it's not happening yeah. in the volume right now it's from what i understand but if you want to put Batman and Catwoman on top of a rooftop looking down on Gotham, it's perfectly fucking great. It's fine. Stuff like that. So Soundwave says, I don't think most people realize how insane the Clone Wars is from a production level. It's crazy high quality. Yeah. It a lot of like, especially like when you get like into the back end of it, like the ex explosions and stuff, some of the explosions and like end up looking so good. But at the same time, I will say when I was a kid, I had this, um, the book on tape, the, you know, turn the page when R2-D2 beeps like this, beep, boop, pop. And um, you put the tape in or the record and you listen to the book and it reads to you. Well, it would, for some reason, it would have like, whenever there was like an explosion, they either carefully picked out like the frames where they had drawn the explosions, like, like, uh, or they redid it. I don't know what it was, but it was very pink. Like the explosions were like 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 when Darth Vader comes into the to the door at the beginning of A New Hope on the uh, tenth of V four, walks through like that's like all pink and the Tie Fighters explode like it all looked different, and um, every now and then on Star Wars Rebels they would capture that, and I did appreciate whoever had that that eye for that that detail, but um, for those original trilogy looking explosions, but fucking Clone Wars the explosions when they see some of that shit explode at the end, that's fucking like almost film quality in the spaceship stuff i'm um, not a fan of uh realistic animation so yeah. i would prefer i just think effects and stuff like that look better when they're 2d animated like they mm -hmm. just they hold up 20 30 years you know they just i just i, I don't know like I'm, I'm of two different minds on this one than most star wars fans like the 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 clone wars aesthetic of trying to get as close as you can to the movies but it's also animated is i don't know it's not my thing but well, once you once you yeah once you get into the to the space stuff at the back of the clone wars it is like you were watching the uh the movies which which on one hand um i i did appreciate but i could also see in a weird way becoming the thing to become critical about the films that yet the films now look more like animation as whereas before they were seen as more photorealistic i don't know but uh, Baymax says fast, like Book of Boba Fett, Episode 3, Dog Shit, Vespa Chase. <laughs> uh, yeah, that might be, that That may be partially, partially um, that. These are it all may... technical issues, though. They'll find mm -hmm. some blending of things to do. You know, there's some blend they can do that's within a budget. And again, these are, anytime I hear a technical problem, I'm like, that. the technical problems will be solved. The yeah. The real question is, you know what are they committed to doing in this format like what are they interested in doing you know business wise in this format are they are they only interested in doing four episode series on a character that kind of goes someplace has a conversation comes back are they interested in telling you know sequence driven uh you know f story stories you know or, 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 or effects and stuff like i don't know like 
or are they are they trying to play to the strengths of their their format because when i everything you've said jason about that goes well that just to me and I'm, i know i'm re-harping a broken record on this but that just says wow you know that red rogue squadron seems like it's made for the volume <laughs> you know mm-hmm. like being in spaceships flying around you know what i mean like is all that stuff you know turning the dials shooting well, the cannons you know running down a little corridor you know a little zipping around like that seems to be well the the, the, uh, the uh the uh thing to uh, actually like remember though is like when you look at rogue one a star wars story i mean the volume is the in a, in a weird way is high-tech primitive filmmaking it's rear projection it's you yeah. know in TV when they used Same to drive and it looked all terrible. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. just we're back there. We're just doing it really really well now. Uh, Rogue yeah. One did the same thing. They basically put the ship cockpits up on a gimbal uh, with screens all around. Really, he actually had a really good picture of it from Rogue One uh, back in the day. I had like really good pictures. That I have the uh, the Cinefix on that one. And um, and so it's like uh, so basically I don't think that Rogue um Rogue Squadron. Is gonna go back. Is gonna go use the volume in the classic sense. I think that they're probably just gonna do the, essentially what they were doing on um, on Rogue One and the, and the, maybe even some of the sequel trilogy shots. And uh, right, because- but like a, an aircraft, like a, a spacecraft hangar and shit like that. You know, mm-hmm. like it's just it's just saying you know, the kinds of stories and the action sequences you're looking. If we're looking for, you know, the Obi Wan and Anakin leaping off flying cars probably not the best thing to do with the volume right (laughs) might want to consider that kind of thing a theatrical event for now Mm -hmm. right but you know if you're on like if you're on a surface a hard uh a hard edge surface like a truck convoy and it's moving really fast right then all you got to do is get some wind fans going up or something (laughs) you know what i mean and let the volume take care of the the, the the background blur kind of shit right but um i don't know like i i this is this is the problem with the, the thing about star wars that always a you know made it like top tier for me you know like the best was that they were always pretty open showing off how they did shit you know and we just these gallery editions they did like they're like a little bit <laughs> a little ee, ee, bit of that this is not much you know it's uh 30 minutes on like several hours of television on how they did shit and you're like what about just little grogu jumping as a puppet from rock to rock how did they d- do those little shots you know like i don't know <laughs> you know the tadpole the tadpole can you um, imagine like a, a remaking of Luke who's talking where it's little Grogu's sperm just flowing through like, little Yoda sperms just little right? ears. Spaceballs too. Spaceballs too opens up with that. Like <laughs> Star Wars Santa says Andor cut from five seasons to three. Grifters spin this three, two, one. Yeah. The um so on, on Santa's show today, we were talking a little bit, and I was like, for starters, we had like a magazine saying that they were going to be filming season three at some point. It was just all, all over the place. And I, I still think that could have been a typo, but my take is when you look at the amount of episodes in season one of Cassian, um, maybe originally they were talking about doing five seasons of six episodes. And then they ended up going with 12 because it got delayed so much and it got pushed, but you know what I mean? And then that we were able to still do something longer. So, um, Without knowing the episode length, without knowing the uh, time, uh, hearing that it wasn't going to be five, but now it's three, it doesn't actually doesn't mean anything. It doesn't um, it doesn't mean anything's bad or, or worse. And then, like I say, we haven't even we, seen a trailer. Like. Haven't seen a trailer, <laughs> and and but but that's that's the thing. Without even seeing a trailer, they're doing two seasons, and so like so you can't spin this into a vote of no confidence. Um, and the other thing is, is what if it was going to be five seasons, but what if they, what if as they work things out, they found that this other emerging character became more of the main character, like Boba Fett and Mando, not a quality, we're not making a quality, um, uh, assessment here, but we're talking about how Mando spun off into B- Boba. And, uh, what if we have something like that? And that that's become its own show now with two other seasons. So what if there's still essentially that? More than likely, that is that is how this is going in some form of that. They don't tend to 
to cut down on content that they have actually planned out. You know what I mean? If it's actually like worked out, I do think it would be wise to, I do think it would be wise to start to, to spin off into another character in that series because Cassian has to die because Cassian does die. So you, you do want your stuff to, to continue to like live on. So if there is a character who, who, really breaks out that would be that could be a very good idea of, of how to do this you know so but yeah the yeah, born Santa. yasm trilogy right the born it's jason yasm you yeah. know he doesn't know who he is <laughs> <laughs> we got gilroy yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah Gil, 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 like, gilroy's like i feel like we got too serious on rogue one i want to just flip it all on its head one of Admiral Akbar, Cassian's right hand spy partner. They do everything together. Completely, it's like a buddy cop movie now with Cassian as the rookie and Akbar as the old cop. He's like, we're gonna call it booty traps. And you go, no, it's booby traps. So that's what I said, booty traps. <laughs> 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 all right, go, all right. <laughs> yeah. Some of the aliens in Clone Wars season one reuse Palpatine's hands. That my my most um I I like under I understand the limitations of animation you know I'm not too hard on it like the fact that they even paid for it and made it happen sometimes is amazing, but um I really hated in in uh, Star Wars Rebels how you have a uh, hat lady who becomes like the mayor of the town I don't remember what her, what her name was off the top of my head but she's like an extra in all of the first episode just walking around like buying like things and shit like that and then, like later on she's like an important character and it's just like. Uh, that is not cool you know the more you rewatch it the, the more like what the fuck that becomes uh baymax says they made the train heist in book of boba Fett episode two look fantastic so where's the disconnect the, the dps and director's ability you know time if i could just get some unedited or minimally edited interviews with these directors right and you could hear them talk, you know, the DP, the director, you can get that each individual individual crew to talk, you'd be able to tell if it's competence, <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. like pretty quickly, because you can hear some directors when they don't really know what they're saying, like, ah, yeah, it was really great. Everyone had a good time. Everyone was great on set. You're like, I don't know what that didn't mean anything versus yeah. cats that get real. I, I think with that episode. I mean, first of all, the the second unit was the the cat who did all the the stunt work and you know designed all the stunt work for Civil War and you know Winter Soldier. Like you know the elevator scene, that's that's him as Captain America and stunt work on that and the elevator scene in Winter Soldier. Like, no, so you had you had like you know a cat that did everything from Winter Soldier through Infinity War and Endgame. You know, like on there helping to like lay out an, an action driven sequence and so. I can say, like, so far, I haven't seen a lot of that from Star Wars, right? Like, really working in hand with a stunt coordinator too much, you know, in a way. Well, like, um, the best I've ever seen since was Darth Acolyte. Maul, the Darth Maul fight. Acolyte's supposed to have the Terrace Kasi. Lots of the Terrace Kasi. So maybe that will be where we first start to see that kind of stuff coming. I hope. Yeah, I hope so. I hope yeah. so. But they also got the character stuff right. There's just little decisions, like the conductor. Like when the conductor comes out and looks around and just goes like that little bit, it sells. That's Star Wars to me. It just sells something there that that's not on the page. You know, like the artists were adding something. You know, mm -hmm. at that point. So yeah, that yeah. episode two is my favorite. Episode six, my next favorite on the Boba Fett. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Is... Yeah. It's it, it's like uh like I I always feel this weird like like guilt whenever I crap on that show because I'm like, there's so much stuff I love in the show. Like, like there's so many moments I love. I love Tamar Morrison. You know what I mean? I, I, I like, I think hey, it's great. Like yeah. yeah. And, and it's like, um, it's just like, it was just simply the, the project layout and then what the director did or didn't do with the, with what they had. And um, so, you know, it is what it is, I guess. It Tyrant happens. says, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, LC, LCD response time variances would play an effect on for the why the volume isn't great for fast moving action. So it doesn't use oh, LCDs. It doesn't. It uses a, no. It uses these specific crystals that they have to grow. 
Like it was crazy. Like I read a whole article on it before it came out. Like they have to very, very spit. He uses actual crystals, which I'm like, that's great. It's like Kyber crystals. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not LCD at all. Like, yeah. Do the crystals call to you, or do you call to them? How does it work? Hey man, look, it's how they sold that shit, bro. Like, what do you want yeah. me to do? <laughs> so tales of, tales of power ish. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta bleed those crystals if you want to make them red. Well, but it has to do with the way light reflects because they can't do smears and stuff. It has to, yeah, it's very complex. Uh, Young Boomer says, surprise live action I didn't versus it hasn't happened yet, but is Battlefield 2 still classed as a black sheep? I, I think so. And I also think that it, with with at the time, like it's now it's very obvious it's dead. And I think that it that opens up the possibilities for something from I didn't versus it if they ever wanted to. But the, the fact of, of the matter is, as that series was alive, you wouldn't touch it. Because if you want to do anything in games, you can't go, you know, leapfrogging where they might go with the game story. You don't want to pigeonhole the games into anything. And do, um, you, mm -hmm. do you think Battlefront should have just been a games as service type sure. thing? Do you? Do you yeah. Really and uh, they actually murdered that game um, through just not understanding where we all were at there were people who still wanted to play it myself included. And then they just like literally just stopped developing for it. They went and gave it out for free, got like an influx of millions of people. And it was like alive and vibrant. And if they had just to say, you know what, we could continue this. They could, they could have, they could have, um, they could have done something with it. They, they dropped the ball. Um, yeah. EA, um, just not a, not a good company for star Wars. I also I don't follow games that much, but I think it was Bespin Bolton was telling me something about how um like they're drop they're 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 dropping uh FIFA, the soccer football game. They're dropping FIFA from from their line, like they don't want to pay for the FIFA license anymore. So they're gonna continue to make like the games, but without the FIFA like part of it or some shit, probably. You know, EA did that it's once crazy. before. I yeah on the Nintendo 64, Madden 64, like they didn't. They didn't. They didn't believe because I don't know how to. I don't know, probably had to just do with the way the turnaround was, but they didn't have the NFL license for that platform, okay. so they literally released Madden sixty four with just the colors of the mm. teams. You know, <laughs> yeah. I say and, uh, bring back Tech Mobile. <laughs> That's what I say. Tech Mobile. For some reason, my, my my mom, who I hadn't seen in like a year, showed up one day with Tech Mobile. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the fuck? I don't even like football. So like, that's all I know about football is pretty much from playing Tech Mobile. Like, it's a good time. You're not gonna understand this, Jason. But if they're to bring back any football, like American football license, it has to be NFL 2K. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's only yeah. one series that needs to be brought back, and it's the one, the only one I have ever cared about playing, other than NFL yeah. Blitz. That's it. Um, Tyrant says, I hate reused assets like the clouds and Super Mario Brothers being from the bushes with the palette swap. Seriously, asset stretching happens all the time as long as it isn't incredulous. Yeah, when, when we were kids, like I remember noticing it, but I thought it was a stylistic. Like that's just how they draw. I mean, now we know it was a technical limitation of the time. I think like, the game cart couldn't be past 36 kilobytes or something like that. So they actually like had to make it. I heard, I heard something like that, anyways. But, um, yeah it's just it's, this reusing assets thing is something that you twitter and youtube are led to complain about and i'm just like you know um you don't want to be spending six months of your production time remaking things you already have yeah and like elder ring shows how you can take the same assets you know update some animations if you need to or just plop those in with newer stuff so your team's focused on making new content and um is that game the loved? average is that game? Is that game? Uh, is that game? Twelve over? million copies in one month, man. Yeah, it's it, it, ridiculous. Yeah, successful. Cyberpunk seventy seven did too. I, I just didn't know. You know what I mean? Like, like it's, oh, and it's fantastic. No, it's, it's a fantastic. fantastic. Game, okay, man. yeah, yeah. It needed a pause button. That's come on, guys. But like, <laughs> you know, like, okay. needlessly cruel. Uh, you know, I can't. It's hard to fight fight with that one. But um, the real thing is, is like one would like that if Nintendo wanted to make more new Super Mario Bros., they would do one in between that is a stylistic difference than the other one. So you can reuse assets, every other sort of thing. Like I, yeah, I, I just, but it's, it's, it's pointless to be like, if you can have a great looking fucking turtle with spikes, why would you be, <laughs> and I make another one. And then you're looking at the model. You're like, why am I doing this again? 
It was a, well, you know, we'll, we'll move the spikes 3% this way. That, that's not, a, you know, what you really want is with games like that, you want them to be able to make as much content, right? Do you want, <laughs> if you get Breath of the Wild too, and you're like, hey, it's a lot of the same stuff, but looks about 10% better, you know, but it's not more content. Um, by the way, I did hear from, um, there's a, Liam Robertson has a really good off the record podcast he does on his Patreon. So, but he did say he got some word on Breath of the Wild too, and that the verticality part of that game is tremendous. What did he say? So, Sorry, because I haven't heard that. And the verticality, the cloud area, it's really epic. Like bigger going than you would think. Going yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the verticality is it's really fleshed out. Like the the air world, it's not a gimmick kind of thing. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so Total Film has just put up um, something. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Chris, for sending that to me. Hayden no, Christensen wait. teases more Darth Vader. The extent of this journey remains to be seen. Exclusive. Hayden Christensen talks to Total Film about his return to as Darth Vader in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Thanks to the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, Hayden Christensen is finally returning to Star Wars Universe's Darth Vader. And the actor could not be happier. When George Lucas had brought me into the prequels, it was to play Anakin. Christensen tells Total Film, go away. Um, which features Obi-Wan Kenobi on the cover. He gets knighted as Darth Vader towards the end. And a couple of the scenes I get put into the suit on. But the... But, but my journey with the character was with Anakin Skywalker. But the character, he's a complex character. And now getting to explore the mindset and the emotional state of Darth Vader has been a lot of fun. Oh, no, look at that dog. Look at that dog. He's going to eat that dog food. Um, Christensen tight lip. Dog is eating Max's really... cord. Stop him. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Christensen's tight lipped when it comes to revealing any specifics about returning to the role. He says, no comment. When asked whether James Earl Jones will voice the character in the upcoming Disney Plus series. And while Christensen can't confirm reports he will return for the new spinoff series about Ahsoka Tano, he does tease that his own journey with Vader may not be complete just yet. The extent of this journey, I think, remains to be seen, he says. But what a privilege <laughs> to get to come back and do this, to be a part of this project. It's almost as if uh, I wrote the lines, huh, Jason? <laughs> It's almost <laughs> as if he likes working. Um, could this mean a Darth Vader series after the Obi-Wan show? Christensen, Christensen won't say a thing. For the minute, though, we can simply enjoy the actor, uh, having the actor back in the galaxy far, far away. And then it talks about the cover. And you can pre-order the copy. Uh, McGregor being shit scared. And... Uh, which definitely... Said, oh, man. Doesn't that... Isn't that a, a, a greasy strangler? line i'm scared i shit, shit my scared. pants and liam pisses his pants that's how we do it <laughs> <laughs> no at, at the at the end of uh greasy strangler he's talking to his girlfriend he's all i'm scared i'm shit scared <laughs> it's, so, it's so good man we, we gotta watch it we gotta watch it i'm shit scared but uh it's yeah. definitely a behind the paywall thing <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, so okay. So yeah, I, I don't I, I really, really do think that well, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously we don't know what any creatives might have might have shown up with until like I got this idea for a Darth Vader story. And like here's what it is. Like we do we don't know um if that's happened in a very compelling way. But when I look at what they're doing with Vader in this story and the things that they show, the check boxes are there. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, he's in agony. He's being taken apart. He's being put together. We're seeing his face through the helmet. We're seeing him in the tank. We're, you know what I mean? Like, it goes on and on and on about, like, all of the um, like kinds of things that you would want to see him do. And uh, that happens here. So I do kind of feel like this kind of hits that. So I, if they announced the Darth Vader series today, I would be like, okay, and yeah what's the angle you know what i mean like that's what i would need because otherwise just having darth vader show up in these the series in the things that he's alive during does the job he's scary as fuck 
So if he shows up rise in the right the way, no agree. Yeah. rise of the no agree. Um, you know, I mean, in Cassie, and I mean, look at what he does in Rogue One. He's not part of really integral to Rogue One so much as just as like why you don't want to fuck up, whether you're good or bad, because he's there. And um, so, like, using him like in Rogue One in the galaxy, I think would probably be the wiser way to go in the future, if it's not super um, personal. But and and then like and then like we know like you know he can't resurrect Padme, he can't. You know, you, you you can't really do anything with them like that. The big so you have to introduce something new, you know. Well, it's been 15 years since Padme passed. I think it's time I start seeing other people. <laughs> I'm going to get on uh, SithSingles.com and, and see if maybe I can find love again. I, I don't know. What do you All I that? want is to drink cereal milk with my own lips in <laughs> <laughs> his blue milk and shit you know like the way yeah i was like blue milk. Milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 there's to me for 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 my creative buck there's just a lot more uh creative places that it they could go a more compelling places that you, you know that you would think and then there's then there's that vader series of that marvel <laughs> like, yeah well i mean no well... that yeah no no that's that's the thing is like like vader you know vader being a character um it, it's it's important but also like vader as a character in hayden you only need hayden if anakin's coming through right yeah like we talked about who's playing darth vader in the story we got like three people playing darth vader in in this story we have the guy in the suit we have the guy who does the sword fighting and we have the guy who takes the mask off and and that's hayden you know when the mask is off when when there's some like like real reason for it so yeah not not completely um not that's no disrespect to the author of that article. They're they're doing their exclusives through the official channels, but that is kind of the epitome of a fluff piece, I think. You know, in the end, a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I just look. It's it's actors. You know, they pretty much say the same thing every time you interview them. You know, yeah, it's really great. We'll see what happens. I don't know unless it's Tom Holland where he just gives away all the spoilers. <laughs> And there's not much to like <laughs> gleam from the conversation, you know. Hey, Rob, can I ask you? I told you. Oh, guys. Hey, Rob, that's that never gets old. I fucking love that shit, man. Um, Rob, can I ask on a scale of one to ten, how excited are you of uh, the Book of Boba Two announcement at Celebration? Like, are you excited? Are you pumped? Excited? Yeah, excited. If it's anything other than a revenge tale feature Mace Window, I'm a negative two. Like, negative two. <laughs> that's the only story I'm interested in. If it's continuing these characters and it's their plucky adventures, you know, earning respect, then I literally will not watch it the night it comes out. I'll I'll get back to Jason on that one. Like, <laughs> You guys could stay up till two a.m. So, so if it's Boba, like hunting down Mace, you're, you're down for that, right? Yeah, because it's a real story. Like that's yeah. that's something that of consequence of matter, like this. And it's not the celebrity or the movie side of it. It's just that that and I need something, you know, like of substance. I mean, if they brought Daniel Logan back and like we're gonna also show stories when he was younger and no 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 and jump back and forth, then that's an amazing thing. I would I would I'd be on eleven. But it's either an eleven or a negative two. There's no in between at this point. Yeah. They've lost the in between. <laughs> like, yeah, it's gone. Yeah, I I feel like 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 for me, I don't know what my number would be, but um, I feel like uh, it definitely could only go up from there. Consistently, that is, you know what I mean. Like like the I I would hope for just a more consistent season. Um and um you know. Loved in, but but didn't really like. Um, I felt like all of the forward momentum that you had with Boba was completely just derailed by here. Oh, here's two episodes or whatever of the Mandalorian now, or whatever they, they did. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm okay with uh with with their with their being a back and forth, but I 
I don't, I don't know why, you know, just, just make the Mando seasons longer then and, and add a bunch of Boba content into, you know, instead of it being eight, make it 12 and let there be like four Boba centric episodes interwoven throughout that story or something. And um, I would be okay with that. You know, that, that's kind of my take, but yeah, well, I, I think, I think we did it guys. I think we did it. We, we, we had max, we lost max where there's just a, just three of us standing now, you know, um mohawk won mohawk's the real winner of today but we had we had some scoops <laughs> we had some dupes cat gets fried chewing cables and shit Poor kid. we had some snoops you know. <laughs> snoop dogs yeah but the uh, plan is we will be back tomorrow at 11 a.m pacific standard time if those clips should hit uh, I plan on jumping back on. I'll send the guys invites, and if they're free, uh, they'll be on here with me. I'll jump back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so we're we're still hoping that that we get those clips. Oh, what was your? Um, this isn't a scoop, but you had a prediction about maybe where we may see those clips hit. What was your um, your prediction that you had? Me um, that we might get get it in uh, during the NBA playoffs on ESPN, as ESPN is owned by Disney. And um, football has, you know, debuted Moon Knight trailer, other movie trailers. So I'm thinking there's a chance we see it uh, there at the NBA playoffs. I can see that. When's that? Later tonight. Oh, okay. So maybe we'll see. I hope so. Fingers yeah. crossed. You, you want, to, want, to, want to know why? Because you guys, you guys know what I like, right? I like spaceships. And uh, yeah, and please everybody like 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 the video. Uh, the more likes that we get, the more YouTube pushes it out to other people and makes it you know worthwhile. And I appreciate everyone who is a channel member and a Patreon supporter and uh, supports the channel and the super chatters and all that jazz. Thank you so much. I I do appreciate it. Um, the the more profitable this is, the more time I could put into it, and that's awesome. And uh, yeah, and thank you too for I'll hanging out about, with me today. I'll do about the same job either way. So yeah, yeah, this is what you're getting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, 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 I told you. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty, man. You know, and uh, uh, but you know, you guys could have you guys could have watched anything today, and you guys watched this show. I just saw what was on CBS. It was on CBS. And then he decided to watch us. And that's what matters. <laughs> so anyways, thanks, everybody. We'll see everyone uh, tomorrow. And uh, if not later, today or tonight, if something does happen. Okay? Bye. It's the end of the show. Come on, let's go. Hey! It's the end of the show. Come on, let's go. Hey! It's the end of the show. Come on, let's go. Hey! No, you should go. Come on, let's go. It's not about spaceships. Hey! Everybody was kung fu fighting. Cover some dust light like force lightning.